Uh, we'll call this meeting to order, and if you'll please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Clerk Spencer, please call the roll. Peza. Here. Gutenkoff. Here. Leader. Here. Dunn. Here. Bram. Here. Polumsky. Here. York. Here. Hipskin. Absent. Healy. Here. Levin. Here. Kennedy. Kennedy. Uh, Kennedy? I can't hear you on the audio yet. Oh. He's there. We see him. We see him. He, okay. Kennedy. Here. Ooh. Okay. Morley. Here. Wagner. Absent. Mulliner. Here. It's like 12 present, 2 absent. All right, we have a quorum. Uh, at this point, we'll proceed to public comment. Has anyone signed uh, in for public comment? No one signed in for public comment, Mr. Mayor. All right, is there anyone that wanted to speak uh, for public comment before we begin? All right, uh, one announcement from Clerk Spencer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Last Monday at the City Council meeting, I announced Elmhurst City Hall would not be an early voting location for the April 9th election. On February 21st, my office received notification that Elmhurst will be an early voting location. The Elmhurst City Hall will serve once again as an early voting location for all DuPage County residents. Early voting will take place on March 25th through April 5th in the council chambers, Monday through Friday between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Staff will be updating the city website as we get these changes from the election commission. And uh, also note that um, the front porch newsletter went to print and it's also stated that Elmhurst would not be a early voting location. So when you get your front porch, please remember, replace reading not with will be. <laughs> and uh, thank you. Thank you, Clerk Spencer. All right, we're going to proceed into our budget discussions. This is the uh, opening night of our substantive discussions. Uh, City Manager, are you ready to take the lead on this? Yes, we are. Thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, you've all had your budgets for approximately a week now, and what I'd like to do is give a, a, a brief overview of the budget. I gave a, a very brief one last Monday. I'd like to get into a little more detail on the overview today, and then we'll turn it over to the department and the department directors, um, along with the finance director and assistant finance director to lead us through. And, and I think what we did last year was go through the, uh, each department and ask questions as they arise. Is that how you want to handle tonight? Very good. Thank you. Um, again, this is the, uh, the 2013 fiscal year, and it's an eight-month budget year, May 1st, 2013 through December 31st, 2013. And this is going to allow us to transition to the calendar fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2014. Um, a couple things to remember as we review the budget, that uh, each revenue line was reviewed and budgeted on a prorated eight-month basis, with the exception of property tax revenue, and that expenses were incurred fairly, that, excuse me, that are incurred over, evenly over time, such as salary and benefits have been budgeted on the prorated eight-month basis. However, many expenses are seasonal and therefore have not been prorated but completely budgeted. Again, to repeat a little bit of what I said last week, proposed revenues uh, for the new fiscal year are lower compared to last year's estimate, primarily due to the eight-month transition. Although some revenues are showing signs of a comeback, we as staff have been cautiously optimistic in our forecasts. In the general fund, the major operating fund of the city, the proposed budget expenditures are $39,577,314 for the 2013 fiscal year, and revenues to the general fund are $41,269,097, which provides for a contribution of fund balance to, uh, excuse me, a contribution of 1.6, almost $1.7 million for the uh, general fund balance. Uh, for the first time, I'm pleased to say for the first time in several years, we've reached the fund balance goal policy of 25 to 33% of operating expenses. Uh, the changes in the general fund 
continue to focus on high quality service delivery in a cost effective manner. And to, to that end, we're decreasing the total number of budgeted full time employees to 259 from 265. And we've been reviewing each position as it opens up uh, in an effort to reduce the future costs of pensions and health care, which are associated with full time employees. I didn't get into the details uh, Monday, and I would like to detail that a little bit more this evening. Um, I'm going to name the full-time positions that we've eliminated from the budget and then follow up as to how we are still providing that service. Um, we've eliminated a youth utility billing customer service representative, public works inspector, a police records clerk, an administrative secretary, and two forestry positions from the budget. However, we have not eliminated those services from, um, from what we do day in and day out. Um, so to that end, the, uh, we replaced the utility billing customer service position with an agency person. Uh, we've replaced the public works inspector with two part-time positions. Uh, additionally, the police records clerk and the administrative secretary have been replaced with part-time staff or will be replaced with part-time staff. And then the work completed by the two forestry positions will be replaced with contract services. And the way we've done that is to look at each position as it becomes vacant. Uh, we've not forced anyone out of any positions. Uh, we've looked at them as they've, as they've come open and uh, to see what other efficiencies we could gain in looking at alternative employment methods. And I really want to thank the department directors for looking at this in a different direction uh, because it hasn't necessarily been um, um, the way to go about it in the past. And so we've talked uh, in great length about where it's appropriate and when it's appropriate. And I'll tell you that it's not appropriate for every position. There have been a number of positions that have come, come open that we've determined do need to be filled with a full-time employee. Uh, police officer, for example, firefighter, uh, our community service officers, we've decided that those should be full-time employees and so we've filled them um, with full-time employees. All told, with the changes that we've made, uh, we're saving approximately $200,000 a year in wages and benefits. So again, I'd like to thank the department directors for uh, thinking outside of, of the uh, ways of the past. Other than that, we're keeping things status quo uh, with no increases in spending unless truly necessary. With the eight-month budget, we weren't necessarily comfortable um, expanding services at this time, not knowing how it's going to affect us year round. Uh, so I think in, if, if revenues continue to increase uh, next year, we'll probably talk about bringing back some of those services that, that maybe we've cut in the past um, in, in the most cost efficient way to do that. Now I want to talk just a little bit about revenues. Stop me if you don't think it's necessary, but I just want to touch on each revenue category because we really didn't get to do that on Monday. Um, overall, uh, proposed revenues for the new fiscal year total $83,959,419. Um, emphasis will continue to be placed on analyzing revenues during the fiscal year and due to the continuation of the unsettled market that could significantly affect the accuracy of our um, projections. Um, the city will continue to monitor legislative proposals that would change how revenues are distributed, especially considering the fiscal condition of the region and the state of Illinois. Um, and a change in the method of distributing sales tax, including a change from original base to a destination base, uh, which would be, a, oh, excuse me, or a reduction in the percentage municipalities received from the state share of revenues, um, which seems to be proposed every year. Um, it, obviously, that would significantly affect our, our revenues. Uh, now, jumping into specifics, the sales tax. Um, our 1% sales tax is projected to increase at a rate of 2% greater than the current fiscal year. Um, <clears throat> that includes projections for Mariano's and the conclusion of the TIF-1 local sales tax increment transfer to the TIF-1 or the redevelopment fund. Although the sales tax is significantly below our high of fiscal year 2000, uh, sales tax remains our greatest single source of revenue in the general fund, excluding the police and fire pension levies. Uh, 
and uh, the city, although the city's taken significant action to stabilize other sources of revenue to the general fund and decrease its reliance on automotive related sales tax, the significant portion of the general fund revenue stream is subject to the constant volatility of the auto industry. Um, that's why our economic, e economic development efforts need to be strengthened. Uh, last budget we did that and uh, we continue that to be a staff priority. Uh, to make sure that we diversify our sales tax and uh, build where we can. Under the prepared food and beverage tax, which is a 1% tax, um, it's projected to increase at an annualized rate of 4% uh, for the eight-month budget. Property taxes um, were approved at 1% less than the 20, 2011 levy. Uh, with an additional $423,005 to capture the Elmhurst Memorial Healthcare uh, new growth. However, uh, the Finance Committee just talked about that, and uh, if you were able to uh, get to that part of your packet, you would know that the Department of Revenue has ruled on the um, hospital's tax exempt status, and so the committee recommended to abate that portion of the levy. So we will. what we're going to do is we're going to get to the county shortly, March, and ask them not to collect that for the city after the city council approves that, assuming that city council approves that. Um, so we were fortunate that they made the ruling, we were able to catch it before that got out to the tax bills, and so now we're able to abate that. Uh, the 2013 tax levy, which will be collected in the summer of 2014, and is the revenue for this budget, is budgeted to contain a 3% increase in the general fund portion of the tax levy no increase in the debt service portion of the tax levy, and a 5% increase in the fire and police pension portion of the levy. And that is in anticipation of the actuarial determination of the contribution. Uh, depends on salaries, uh, market conditions, investment returns, all those factors. Uh, again, those are just our, our best guesses at this point for what we'll need. Uh, the state sales income tax, excuse me, the state income tax, uh, projected for fiscal year 13 reflects an increase of two and a half percent. The local motor fuel tax, which is our cent and a half per gallon, is estimated, <coughs> excuse me, um, excuse me, the, uh, the estimated local MFT is 258,000 and then for next, the eight month fiscal year 2013 is 172,000. Uh, these funds are designated exclusively for stormwater system improvements. Uh, the utility tax, which is our telephone, electric, and gas taxes, natural gas, um, we allocate, important to note that we allocate 75% um, of the telecommunications to the general fund, 25% to the capital improvement fund. Telecommunications tax revenue is at its lowest point in the last 10 years due to expanded use of the internet for telephone services and the decision by some DSL providers to stop imposing the tax on these services. The electric tax is on a kilowatt um, consumption. Uh, inflation has eroded that somewhat and the city also converted to a gas use tax of a uh, cent and a half per therm. Utility taxes are projected to increase at the rate of a half a percent for the next fiscal year. So very conservative on that one. Uh, the rubbish collection revenue, as we all know, we just signed a new agreement with uh, uh, Republic Allied, and those are the projected annualized revenues reflect a decrease of 6% compared to the current year's estimates uh, due to the terms and pricing of the new contract. Licenses and permits, uh, permit fee budget for 2013 is projected at 1.2 million and contemplates 76 new homes and several commercial projects. Uh, vehicle license fees are a significant source of revenue at $1.3 million annually and all proceeds of the vehicle license sales are designated for street improvements. A uh, few of the other funds, the water and sewer rate increases. Everybody knows we, uh, we look at that annually on or about May 1st. However, recently due to the City of Chicago and DuPage Water Commission, um, water rate adjustments effective in January 1st of 2012 and for the next three years, city water rates were reviewed and adjusted uh, effective January 1st of 2013. And this review will remain on a calendar year basis now. 
the sewer rate adjustments will move to a calendar year basis as well in 2014 when we transition to that calendar year uh, budget. Uh, for the parking system, no fee increases are projected at this time. Total revenue for parking system is projected to be $604,914 for 2013, of which $359,640 is attributable to the daily and permit parking fees. Um, the MFT, which is the state allocated funds for uh, based on population, is um, we, there was an extra that was that was added uh, in 2009 we're still receiving that portion um, so we will put that into the budget as we have for the last um, three years and then on the TIF funds um, for TIF 1 which of course is the central business district redevelopment area uh, the property tax revenue is projected to decrease slightly uh, due to the projected decrease in EAV and the release of the properties um, on the Han Street development and incorporation into the TIF 4 North York area. <clears throat> TIF 2, which is the Lake and Walnut industrial redevelopment area, um, they're accruing to the fund and are anticipated to be flat. However, this year, uh, as no new growth is anticipated in that redevelopment project area. And then TIF 3, which is the Route 83 and St. Charles commercial development, uh, the revenues projected for this area are anticipated to decrease slightly in the uh, 13, 2013 fiscal year due to projected decreases in the EAV. Um, so with that, um, we will, uh, unless there's questions on the revenues, I'll ask uh, Chief Bassett to come up and uh, we can start into fire protection. Very good. I have a, I have a question. Alderman York. Um, yeah, on the, uh, just going back uh, real quick to the uh, comment you made on property taxes and the 5% increase in the pensions um, I know that's I know it's an actuarial study but are we have we taken into account the favorable performance of the equity markets and so on and so forth I mean I know it's you don't want to be too happy about what's going on but um, has that all been factored in there please Tom. <laughs> we actually the pension funds um, the levies are generated based on our assumptions as you mentioned and stuff and, and we sort of stick with that with our projections for the property tax levy um, of seven and a quarter percent investment return and five percent for payroll we, because they <coughs> we do um, levy as a percentage of payroll that's why we estimate the levy to go up five percent because we're estimating payroll will go up five percent so we're not estimating if in Next returns. year, the investment okay. return will be 20% or 15. We're sticking with the 5% increase in payroll, and that's how it's um, determined. Okay, thank you. I have another question. Please, go ahead. Um, on the local motor fuel tax, uh, those funds that are designated for stormwater system improvements, are those, um, uh, for lack of a better word, restricted funds, or are they kind of spent uh, throughout the year. Um, we've only had the local motor fuel tax for a couple, three years. Are those segregated and kept until we get to a big project or are they kind of used throughout the course of the year? We use that more for the maintenance side of it, so they're used throughout the year. Yeah. Thank you. Alderman Morley. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Grabowski, you had mentioned early on uh, it's it's illustrated on page 26, the head count. Um, in past budget discussions, when we were in lean years, um, there was positions that were on the book, but they were considered dark, which meant that the intention of city staff was not to fill those positions. My question to you is, um, I see in your proposed 2013, 259. Um, <laughs> Are any of those positions positions that you're not actively seeking to fill? Does that make sense? I think Tom and Marilyn are more familiar with the, the term that. No, I, I understand what you mean. I just want to make sure that uh, my answer is accurate here. Um, we, we have some vacancies right now that we are searching. Uh, there are no, any positions that I've outlined have been removed from the budget. 
And my thought behind that is, I know in the past it's, it's been considered dark. Um, certainly we should, we should try, we should be willing to try to fill them in alternate ways that saves money. If that doesn't work, then we'll come back to the council. But we can't find that out unless we try. I follow up, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to make sure what I was reading is what I was reading. So I appreciate the fact that, um, as you illustrated, not only did you um, uh, reduce the headcount a little bit, uh, but you did it without sacrificing services. So I just wanted that clarification. Thank you. Alderman Healy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and I apologize in advance if this question was answered at the last meeting. I wasn't present. But I just want to make sure I am crystal clear on the budget cycle process. What we are discussing and reviewing is both the eight-month budget and then the full year budget for next year. At the end of this process, what are we going to be approving? At the end of this process, we'll ask you to approve the eight-month budget. That's it. We'll be back at this in October, November. Of this year. Of this year. To, of this calendar year. Of 2013 to approve. And we'll do the budget before we do the Levy. Same time. The levy? Same time. Yes, there'll be a parallel. We'll, we will start the budget process before the levy, but ultimately they need to be approved around the same time to, be, to make sure that they get to the county in time. But we will, have to, we will have done the budget review prior to voting on the levy. I mean, we can answer this question down the road. But, I mean, it's not germane to this specific exercise, but I'm just looking forward. I want to make sure I understand and the public understands, are we going to approve the budget or at least know what the budget is and then the levy? Or are we going to do, I, I, I think we've got to do that first, to be honest with you. We've got to do that first, know what we're saying. Okay, and now. Let us get a better calendar together with the two. Okay. And we can come back at the next I, I think we've meeting. got to communicate that well in advance and make it very crystal clear to not only the elected officials but the public so that when we're going through this in October, November, December, we, we all know that. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. Let's uh, see if we can get some of our department heads rolling here so we can uh, get through them tonight. Let's start with fire. In the revenue part of the budget, there's Thank you. Uh, the Elmhurst Fire Department remains focused on its core mission, which is the protection of life and property in the Elmhurst community. As a recent ISO evaluation revealed, the Elmhurst Fire Department continues to be rated one of the best fire departments throughout the nation. The continued commitment by you, the City Council, allows us to continually provide responsive and superior public safety services, which the Elmhurst community has come to expect. To accomplish our mission, we continue to put great emphasis on training in order to keep our personnel prepared for any type of incident that presents itself. We continue to utilize our training facility, which allows us not only training opportunities for our firefighters, but also for our public works and wastewater treatment personnel. Included in this proposed budget are increased funds for officer development training, as well as allowing for conference attendance, which was removed in recent years. During recent budget challenges, the fire department has delayed replacement of some equipment and has instead continued to repair as needed. Some of this equipment has reached a point that it needs to be replaced. Over the next two years, we are proposing to replace some of this equipment that has been continually breaking down and is no longer uh, being able to be repaired. This equipment includes rescue saws, gas monitors to uh, be used to detect CO in homes, uh, exhaust fans, dewatering vacuums, pumps, and our self-contained breathing apparatus bottles, which have to be replaced according to uh, Department of Transportation. They only give us so many years on these bottles and we have to replace them. The other highlight is funds in the 2014 proposed line item for a possible second DUCOM facility. In the past five years, 11 new agencies have joined DUCOM. This consolidation is good for Elmhurst as it spreads the overall operating costs over many more agencies and has provided for more dispatchers on duty. For consolidation to continue, more space for dispatchers will, dispatchers will have to be provided. Consultants have been hired to look at space needs and look at options for this second facility. This second facility would also serve as a backup to the current location in case of equipment failure, fire, or other scenario which would leave the current facility unable to operate. 
Please note that this second facility has not been approved by member agencies, which Elmhurst is one, and if not approved, the budget number you see for 2014 will be lower. The City of Elmhurst has been involved in every step of the way during these consultant studies as we have a seat on the DUCOM Board of Directors and on the Executive Board for DUCOM. We will continue to monitor the progress of these studies and we'll make a presentation at future meetings uh, as it goes along. One of our most successful programs has been our radio fire alarm system. We project to have over 500 radio alarms by the end of the year. We are currently in the process of switching all city burglar alarms over to a radio alarm, thus saving approximately ten dollars to $12,000 a year on the phone lines which currently carry the signal. I thank you for enhancing the life of those who live, work, and visit Elmhurst by supporting the fire department in its mission. I would also like to thank the dedicated firefighter and paramedics who hold devotion to their duty above their personal safety and comfort while helping those in need in our community. Thank you. I'll be happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Chief. Questions? Alderman Pezza. Just a quick one on the 3018 DUCOM for 2014. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Which number, please? Pardon? Page 133. Oh, page 133. <clears throat> Just curious, how, how will that work? It, will every community be charged the same amount? How will they figure out who has to contribute what? Is it just split evenly? For, for police, it's based on the number of sworn officers you have, and for fire departments, it's based on your EAV. So the, our EAV is higher, so obviously we'd be playing a little bit higher. Interesting, thanks. Mm -hmm. Alderman Healy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have two questions. Um, first, for a fairly straightforward one, uh, page 134, line 110, 4020, 422, 80 06 vehicles. Is that a 207,002? Are we replacing a truck, uh, an ambulance? I didn't see a, an explanation for that. In that line item is, if you remember back the last contract that we signed with Metro Paramedics that gave us the ability to purchase the ambulances at the end of the contract year for a dollar apiece. And we, we realized at that time when we were thinking about doing this that we would have to buy another ambulance to have three to have a spare. Um, so that $175,000 is in there to, to possibly purchase that ambulance. We haven't made that decision which way we're going to go yet. We're just starting to look at that now. But a big portion of that is uh, for that, that ambulance. So we have two now? Metro supplies us with two right now. We do not own, currently own any of them. But at the end of the contract, which is the end of August, we have the ability to buy the two that they're providing right now for a dollar a piece. Then for us to continue on, we would, we would have to buy a spare. We, we can't get by with just two because of breakdowns. But we will vet all that out in the next few months. Thank you. And then my second question, and this is not specific to the fire per se, but I think this is a question that comes up at least my four years, specific to data processing. And I know how it's spread across all departments, but there are increases in, in, in every department. And I remember last year's budget conversation, it was because you know, that we were going to improve our IT, we we're going to add our IT staff. We didn't at that point. They were budgeted. Just to avoid the question for each department, can, can somebody give us an update on IT staffing and, and how the charges were applied? Are these people on board? Are we going to hire them finally? What's the status? This year. Currently, in the IT budget, um, there's five full-time positions, one part-time position, and two interns. Um, the, the one full-time position and part-time position and the interns actually are all in process of, of hiring right now. Those positions were filled, and the people that were in those positions have left for, for a variety of reasons. And, but we're in process right now. Some are in background checks. Some are just at the interview stage right now. So the dollars we see budgeted for not only fire, but then every department, those are budgeted because they're going to be filled 
everything we've wanted to do over the last few years, we're now doing or hiring people to do. Is that all correct? That's correct. And a lot of that's also, that's the capital dollars, too, in the IT budget. The entire IT budget gets split throughout every department. Uh, there's, a, there's a page in the bottom, not exactly what page is. Tom Trezine can probably tell you what page it is. It shows how that's divided up by the different departments. But it's and the entire IT budget that gets spread out, not and, just the personnel. And that's capital, that's equipment, that's people, that's everything. And it's just spread across that one line at each department. That's so correct. the actual increase is not just a budget increase, it's an actual increase. We're going to have people staffing those IT positions. That's, that's correct. That's yeah. page 376, I believe. Thank you. And that, that, that varies because of the capital more than anything, but that does make a difference. Alderman Bram. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, page 134, uh, relatively basic questions um, on this page, and there's two of them. One being line item 4075, rescue equipment. I did see the J form on this. Um, it said about uh, purchasing Jaws of Life, which obviously is a good thing. Um, I guess battery powered Jaws of Life. Do we have, I thought we already had Jaws of Life or did they break or we need a new set or what's the what's We the do, this, this particular piece of equipment is a battery operated uh, Jaws of Life. It, so there's no hoses, there's no cords attached to it. The Foreign Fire Tax Board last year approved the purchase of one of these uh, pieces of equipment and we carry it on our fire engine. All our other hearse equipment is either on our ladder trucks or on our squad. So if a fire engine pulled up, they don't have the ability uh, they don't have a tool like this. Uh, interestingly enough, when, we, when the foreign fire techs bought this piece of equipment, one week after having it in service, we got a call for a car that fell on a gentleman's leg. Fireman jumped out, grabbed it, had him out like within a minute using this piece of equipment. So it's really proved itself well. We just want to buy one for the other fire engine for the other end of town. Great, great to hear. Uh, my second question is on the same page, 134, line item 60-11, conferences, seminars, and training. Um, obviously keeping in mind that this is an eight, eight month budget cycle, so it should be relatively in the ballpark of two thirds of the previous year. Uh, and this is almost identical to what was, <coughs> what's estimated as well as budgeted for the previous year at 24,000 compared to last year of 26. So are we expanding our, our conferences and training? And if so, what are the details behind that to have such an increase relative to you know, the budgeted amount? No, it's, it's a good question, and, and I mentioned a little bit of it in the opening statement, but we have cut out conferences and seminars in the past few years because of uh, budget uh, challenges. So we were trying to put, we were proposing to put some of that back in. And in a lot of our training, if we bring in outside instructors and things, <coughs> happens in the summer. So by the end of that eight-month cycle, we would have done most of our training. So it's almost a full year, and a lot of it has to do with the weather and bringing out outside instructors and the conferences that are held land up in that eight month uh, period. Okay. Thank you, because that makes a lot of sense. I think that's probably what I'm gonna hear from Public Works a lot too, because a lot of those budget line items are almost identical, but a lot of those programs are gonna happen in the summer months, so eight month cycle doesn't impact it. So makes a lot of sense, thank you. Foreman President. Thank you. Um, back to item 8006 vehicles, I just want to clarify, I guess especially for anyone listening or watching, I'm assuming that even though that $175,000 per potential third ambulance number is there, the fact that if we did choose to purchase them, we would own them, it would be, the cost would be offset by not having to lease them. So Correct. the contract per year would be lesser. So that this cost would be offset by that. Correct. But there's also equipment that's involved in that that's not even in the budget yet. So. Okay. And there's also in that line item, I, I, I failed to say, there was a pickup truck that we need to replace. We, it was in this year's budget. We deferred it for one more year. That's uh, 32000 for a replacement for that. Thank you. That's our pickup with our snow plow on it. Alderman Morley. Yes, just a clarification to follow up with that. Um, I, I noticed, and we're going to be getting to it later on in the evening, but, uh, and it's really, I, it's more of a reporting question for Marilyn or Tom that uh, the vehicles that are listed under public works are called out in the explanation forms, but the line item here was not. And I'm wondering, is that because it is offset by revenue or is there a specific reason? I just wanna be able to apply that as I review the rest of the budget. When there wasn't a, a budget item the previous year, that's what triggered a, a J form or ju some justification. In this case, 
Um, even though the dollar amount was more, um, we did not prepare the form because there was a budget in there last year. So if you see a zero in the previous year, you're going to see a form. If you don't see a zero, then no form. Now, I will say all of these, including vehicles, the detail is in the capital expenditure budget. So whether we have a written explanation or not, you'll be able to see the detail looking at um, the summary at the back of the um, capital expenditure budget. Okay. Alderman Bram. Thank you. Staying on the J form topic, the justification form topic, um, I, I agree from the vehicle standpoint, but my understanding when we would typically see a J form was from the previous budget year, if there was a significant, and I don't recall what the definition of significant increase was from the previous uh, budget year, isn't that typically when we would see a justification form uh, outside of the vehicle statement? I understand that. Right. Outside of capital, yes. If the if the budget was um, greater than 2,500 compared to the prior year budget, or greater than 10 percent, Tom, five percent, five percent. Um, we would have a J form. Yeah. That was a little bit tricky this year because almost every line item is less this year than it was last year. <laughs> so some of them we decided we still wanted to put a J form in because there was information you needed to know about that line item that we felt was appropriate. So you aren't seeing as many J forms this year simply because of the eight month year. So just to follow up on that, so it wasn't, the eight month year wasn't taken in consideration <clears throat> when doing a justification form. Uh, i.e. multiplying out to a full year and if it was significantly more a J form would be necessary or needed. We did not do it that way. We didn't say okay now if this was really a full year it would be this much and therefore we need a J form. Okay. Um, we did a J form when the dollars um, fit the criteria and then also when we felt there was information that needed to be um, provided in the case of DUCOM, that line item, we provided a J form explanation for it, but it didn't meet the criteria. Makes sense. Thank you. Other questions? Alderman Dunn. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, one page 133, line item uh, 2011. Um, that particular line, line item for the eight month is uh, about the same as previous years. So just wondering how that is accrued um, and why it isn't at a reduced rate. Which line item, Alderman? Could you a 2011, that? last four digits. Page 133. Oh, yeah. 133. It's a property tax. Yeah, that, that line item is actually the, the property tax levy for the, in this case, the fire pension. So it's, that's actuarially determined. It's exactly what the city has levied. It is shown in the fire department as, a, as an expense. On the revenue side, you see the revenue coming in from the tax levy. So it's not a number, it's a number that we're, we're told as opposed to developing ourselves. It's, it's directly out of the levy. Yeah. Other questions? Seems like for, a, for your first year, should, you should be hazed more, but uh, thank you for coming out tonight, Chief. <laughs> thank you. Well, we're not quite done with Chief. Yeah. You know, wireless. No, we got one more portion. <laughs> as, you know, yeah. as, uh, all right. Nice try. Two more. You know. yeah, any questions on the wireless or the ESDA accounts? <laughs> I guess I was right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right, uh, we'll proceed to Public Works. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Welcome, Director Hughes. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Um, Jim stole my thunder with his highlights of the, uh, the two forestry workers, which we have reduced, three in total in Public Works. Um, the two forestry uh, full-time employees will be replaced with contract labor, which will be focused on contract tree trimming. Again, one of the things when we evaluate the applicability of 
of privatizing something you have to look at the task that's being done and tree trimming is while it does take a it certainly takes us a level of skill um, it doesn't take communication skill it doesn't take people skills it doesn't take a lot of knowledge of the city and the history of the city so it's the type of uh, of uh, work that can be done is a natural for being done by contract labor so the other position that we did uh, uh, eliminate full-time was the uh, city inspector this is the gentleman that does a lot of the sewer inspections water tap inspections uh, parkway inspections for driveway work and that type of thing and that does take um, a lot more uh, skill and people skills and communication so we went with two uh, contract or two part-time employees which so far seems to be working out fairly well we got two two people that are very uh, fit into our, our employee base very personable people very knowledgeable so that's worked out well and as Jim said uh, you know uh, we'll, we'll keep trying it uh, next year we'll go off for contract with the tree trimming and we'll see how that goes but at this point I don't anticipate any reason why it wouldn't be successful thank you questions Alderman Moliner yeah um, and this is a positive thing to, to cut back people if we can but I just want to make sure that that's not going to have any negative impacts anyplace else I'm sure you've thought through that I know one of the concerns that I always have with public works is making sure that we've got enough people to plow streets uh, so I want to make sure that you know if we remove two people there it's not going to impact our street cleaning during the those t those other times during the year um, you know, obviously a concern of mine as well, both uh, snow removal, but other emergencies we've had for some reason. Numerous uh, blowdowns over the last couple of years, July 1st this year. We, we lost 700 trees total last year. Um, so we're, uh, we actually lost uh, I think a total of 700 trees last year. But so it is a, it is a concern. We do have other employees um, because one of the problems with forestry is not everyone can run a chainsaw safely. So we have bodies that can help drag debris, drag brush, other workers that can, can load the chippers. But chainsaw work is obviously a skilled uh, task that you have to be experienced at. But we do have forestry guys that have moved to other divisions over the years. So in an emergency, we could call them back. And really, on the um, on both this, the snow and the um, tree removal it's it's a matter of duration I mean obviously if we reduce by a certain number it's just going to take that much longer to get it done on the snow removal you know when you consider how many bodies are out there it's it's a it's an impact but I don't think it's going to be that noticeable tree removal and a blowdown you know that's it could slow us down a little bit because our biggest push is that first 24 hours 48 hours we're trying to get the streets open so um, you know, we'll, we'll do the best we can, and um, we will uh, explore emergency response with vendors as well to supplement. Um, that way, if we don't need it in a given year, we don't pay for it, but that'll be part of the contract that we'll put together. We're, we're just now, once the budget is a little further along, we'll start putting together the, bid, the specs for bidding out for contract tree work, and we Thank will you. include emergency response. Alderman Bram. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, are we diving into the line items, I assume? Yes. Okay. Uh, on page 148, I have a, a few questions, but on page 148, <coughs> bless you, uh, line item 1002, part-time. Second. Um, I understand the full-time, it, it shows that it's significantly reduced due to the eight-month cycle, but in, in this case, it's actually more than what's estimated for this current fiscal year. I was wondering if we're hiring more interns or what's the rationale behind the slightly increased over a full year of last year? Yeah, that, uh, the, we do have three engineering interns that we hire every year. That is in there, same as always. But the part-time inspectors that we've hired in lieu of the full-time employee, it, that's, where the subsequent, that's where the substantive increase comes in. Thank you. On um, page 150. Yeah few questions here um, line item 1002 again the part-time same question it's exactly what's estimated for this fiscal year although it's an eight-month cycle is it this, um, this one is 
um, getting us closer back to old levels of part-timers. We were carrying four, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, in streets, and uh, we've upped that to seven. You'll see the same thing in uh, forestry. You know, they provide critical work that, that we need done, and, and we're at about, I think, about three-quarters of where we were five years ago in terms of part-timers across public works. And then just two more questions. The same question I asked from the fire perspective, the whole section of contractual services, it seems like it's um, identical to the current fiscal year due to the fact that even though it's an eight month cycle, it's happening all during the summer months, so it really doesn't make a difference. Is that an accurate statement? Yeah, most of what we contract for is obviously good weather work. And right. so, um, so the vast majority of that stuff will be contracted uh, and even most of the commodities similar uh, for the eight month period will be almost a full year of expenses. And then line item th on the same page on page 150, line item 30-98, other services. I do know that there's a J form in here in, re in that regard. And I, I just actually wanted to speak to this so the public knows. Um, it is, I, I don't want to call it significant, but it's an increase, even though on an eight month cycle, relative to this current fiscal year, it's 223,000 and change compared to 177,000 and change for this current fiscal year. The reason why I wanted to highlight this is because what is being proposed here is having additional sweet street sweeping uh, cycles within the city, which I know I have heard many, many requests for. So I'm really glad to see that uh, we're moving in that direction since our budget's a little bit better than the past three, four, five years. So uh, I just want to highlight that to the public because that's, that's big to me in regards to preventing flooding and just pure maintenance of the street. So I just wanted to thank the staff and highlight that. Yeah, that, that's an increase from five sweepings last year to, to seven. So that, that really is a positive thing. There's a lot of water quality. It, street sweeping is now a big water quality um, tool. So more street sweeping is, is always better, so. Alderman Healy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Director Hughes, can you talk a little bit about the loss of the forestry worker and then the addition of contractual services, the 50,000 in the partial year and 100,000? I did some quick math and, and it, it appears that we're gonna be, at least on the budget, we're gonna be spending more for tree trimming with the contractual services than we would have been without the, the extra worker. Do we expect to get additional tree trimming or more tree trimming as a result of going to contractual services? Or was this simply a 50,000, 100, you know, 100,000 for next year? Uh, is that a, is that a, you know, an educated guess? Is that what we expect? Because it, it appears just, again, doing some quick math, it appears that we're spending more, even though we're letting go, we're, we're going to be one body down. Well, I believe with, uh, we're going down two bodies. So salary and then uh, benefits, I think there's a pretty significant savings even at the $100,000 level. Um, Marilyn shares it looks like it's about a $42,000 savings over salary and benefits for two employees. Um, for the partial year. Oh, for the partial year. I, I, I came up with 39000 for Benny's and, and salary, but 42000 that's fine. That's the full year, sorry. That's the full year. Right. And we've got $100,000 in tree trimming for the full year. That's after the 100000 So there's a savings of 142000 less the 100. There's a okay. net savings then of 42. Can, I, I need to have somebody walk me through the math because the budget doesn't show that. Can, can we get a line item number for that? Please? I'm sorry, it's page 154. Um, and then the first basically three paragraphs, salaries, wages, employee bennies, and then contractual services. So if you're looking at the first line, 1001, 679.9, and then you're going out to the full year, 621.2, is that kind of what you're looking at? I, I was looking at totals. Oh, I see. So okay. it's totals for salaries One, and wages. And I understand gotcha. that that includes some increases for the, right. for the positions that remain. Right. And I, I only ran the exercise on just the salaries. I didn't do it on the totals. But if you take the the 679.9 times three and a half, two years in a row, that's an additional, uh, that brings it to 727. So that's about shy of 
fifty thousand dollars right there so when you take three and a half times three and a half on just the salary there um and then you, you so you have uh almost a hundred thousand hundred and six thousand dollars in savings and salary when you net when you include the three and a half percent raise over the, the two years and that's just on the salary okay i'm still struggling a little bit with it because part time's a separate line those are different employees i get that overtime full time that would be applicable to the the reduction and sick payout would be applicable to the reduction and the totals don't show that and the and the part time you know the part time there's a difference of $5,800 so whether you whether you're doing and I'm I'm back to the eight month, and and, and believe me, I'm not questioning the reduction of, of of the. I just want to make sure I understand that we're paying what we're paying for, and and are we getting more for what we're paying? If I can add to it, and what we'll what we'll send out with the next packet is a, a spreadsheet that Director Gaston and I were working over today and and Tom Trezine had helped put together for this specific department what we looked at was um, two full-time employees at um, mid scale of uh, 47,000 per year uh, plus Social Security IMRF health insurance and we took health insurance one single one family just to kind of average it out uh, for a total salary and benefits for two employees of $142,422. Then we, you take off the 100000 in tree trimming and then you have the... What I'd ask, and if we could make this a follow-up, what I would ask is that you take that information from the spreadsheet and break it down by line so that the 100 and... I'm sorry, did you say 124? 142000 142, kind of by line show where that came out of the budget. So if 42,000 of it came out of full-time salaries and wages, show that. Because I, I, I don't see where it's coming out of the budget. I don't see 142,000, whether it's partial year or full year, coming out of the budget. I don't, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt the numbers. I'd like to see where it comes out of the budget. Okay. All right, I think we're still under E generally, if there are any topics, we're jumping around a little bit, so we'll stay with that program. <laughs> Alderman Gudenkoff and Alderman Dunn. Uh, on page 154, uh, line 30, 34, landscaping maintenance. And this comes directly out of our um, committee meeting tonight. And um, one of the things we talked about was budgeting. Oh, am I got the right report? Um, budgeting approximately 70000 but we got bids back at significantly less than that. So what I'd like to propose we do is um, reduce the 2013 and then the 2014 fiscal year budget document to reflect what our actual bids are. What, what line, please? If I, I... Uh, it's line 30-34, landscaping page, maintenance. 154. On page 30-34 on page 154. Right. If I could add a little bit to that, I apologize because I didn't. I did not talk about this at the committee, so I, I apologize, uh, Alderman mm -hmm. Gutenkoff. We did budget approximately the right number for mowing of about seventy-two thousand dollars, but there are some additions in that line item over previous years, including um, some a contract mowing that's been added at the treatment plant. And then also a uh, project to, this is the second year of the project to replace the deteriorated Versalock caps and walls at the underpass. And then there's also, this is the year that we added the fertilization and weed treatment. So there are some additions so the so that we will spend uh, roughly that 121. Only 70 of it roughly is the, the is the turf maintenance contract we approved tonight? I understand that, but the turf maintenance um, bid came in at 43. Oh, okay. And so I got so you. what I'd like to do is take that the difference differential between the 70 and okay. the 43 and change. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just a. Uh, let's see what Alderman Dunn was next. Uh, yes, page 150. Um, no, I'm sorry, 151. Uh, line item 8015, 
We have uh, for this year, we're budgeting uh, 3.3 million for roadway improvements um, on par with previous two years, but next year we're looking at a significant drop in uh, what we're budgeting for roadway improvements. I'm just not understanding what's, what the plan is there. Those are the large roadway projects, so depending what is in, for instance, in this year, and it's a uh, Keb sheet. Uh, At St. Charles? Nine. further out than that, isn't it? I believe next year it's only got um, the... Uh, <laughs> oh, fresh. Corey to the rescue. Sorry, um, so next year we have only the um, Commonwealth and Butterfield Right. <laughs> That's not making sense. <clears throat> this is 8015. So for next year, it is just um, street resurfacing. There's there's various items that are within one um, budget line item. So like this year has street resurfacing at you know one million seven hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. The parking lot resurfacing um, twenty five thousand. City Hall parking lot is. Uh, if we do a green project, 650,000, concrete street reconstruction is 300,000, and there's St. Charles roadway improvements at 580,000, which is why it's $3,305,000. And then in 2014, we don't have a St. Charles roadway project, and we don't have the city hall parking lot in there, which is why it's a lot less. Okay. And that, that, that happens every year, depending on which you know, large capital projects we have in the roadway work. All right, Alderman York, then Alderman Bram. I, I just had a follow-up on Alderman Gutenkoff's question, I think, and um, I see we added the wastewater treatment plant uh, mowing. Who was doing that before? Were we doing that in-house before? Or? Uh, I, I believe we were kind of just not doing, not doing it. it. So it's in sort of an out-of-the-way place and probably would be best that we maintain the site, so. And then, um, on the fertilizer and weed control, uh, certainly have gotten comments from residents uh, on the Robert Palmer uh, area. So I'm assuming that's one of the targets. Are, it is. Can you kind of, where are the other ones at, or, or is that? Um, I believe that's the, really the main one. I believe City Hall is one. And, Page, Kevin. Um, in the Historical Museum, sorry. So Palmer Drive, City Hall, and the Historical Museum. OK. Thank you. Uh, page 154, page 154, uh, 3034. Is that it, Alderman York? For now. Thank Very you. good. Oh. <laughs> Alderman Bram. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one, I wanted to speak to Alderman Dunn's previous question. I, I think that and, um, to assist here, when you look at the capital outlay, uh, looking at that big line item, you're never going to know what it breaks out to. So you really have to page through the capital expenditures budget uh, to understand that in greater detail. Obviously, the vehicles is a part, but not a part of the capital expenditures budget. So um, that's how you'd be able to decipher those large numbers without falling off your chair. Um, but to my questions on uh, page 153, their um, contractual services, snow removal, Line item 30-72. Um, I don't know if we're counting on global warming to continue on. It seems to be a very minimal, um, even even for eight months, it seems to be very minimal dollar amount being 25,000 uh, when we've seen uh, a wide range here. But are, are we being too positive um, on this line item or is this certain areas of the city for snow removal? well it's really city just center. the month of December because we're going from May to January so oh. I think really you know if, if the <laughs> stars all align hopefully we don't spend more than that gotcha but uh, the okay um, the next question is the 
I think the electrical section on page, where is it? On page 158, um, two line items on page 158, 80-16 and 80-98, um, traffic signals and miscellaneous equipment. And this is more of a comment. Uh, again, I guess maybe doing a PSA here compared to ask, asking a question. Um, both of them have, are part of the J forms. Uh, one thing that I want to highlight, especially for the third ward for traffic signals, um, there seems to be proposed, and Director Hughes, you can correct me if I'm wrong, some improvements of the traffic signals up and down North Avenue, up and down Lake Street, and one that I've been begging for for the past five years, uh, Crestview and uh, York Road. Um, so thank you for, for those, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and then the other line item, same page, being the changing out the miscellaneous equipment, the replacement of, of the street light luminaries with newer, more efficient ones, which again goes to everything we, we talk about for um, cool cities, et cetera. Uh, my next question is under the public benefits section, and that's on page 167. Line item 80-34, sidewalk improvements. Um, my concern here is um, for this fiscal year, what's proposed budgetary-wise, I believe this is the new sidewalk um, um, area for budget line item. I'm concerned that $75,000 is not enough. I mean, we've seen this, the cost of new sidewalks, depending on the area, um, but range anywhere from 75 to I think 150 to almost 200,000. Um, knowing that, that we have a, a, a few projects already on the table, is this a correct budget amount even for the shortened cycle? Uh, no, this is for the whole budget. Then we get 50% back. Um, you know, this is uh, as we discussed in in the cab discussions, the 50,000 is what has been in there previously. Um, we have 75,000 in there for this year for the Howard Street sidewalk should it go, go forward, but as it's budgeted, both Comstock and, and Crockett, the next two in the queue are looking at 175, so uh, you've you're got to roll over a few years before you get there. So you're, I guess what I'm asking is you're confident that the 75,000 is the right amount budgeted for, for Howard for this upcoming yeah, cycle? That one we're, we're pretty confident that our estimate should be within that 75, but okay. we know that the 50s are not obviously going to get us there. So. Right. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Gutenkopf. Um, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. On the same page, the line before it for street improvement, the 199.7, does that include the proposal for the um, York Road underpass at the Prairie Path? No. Uh, no, that, that 199, 1,999, that is Butterfield and Commonwealth. That's just Butterfield and Commonwealth. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like the Chief's happy about his budget. All right. Uh, <laughs> any other questions on public works? <laughs> All right. Next year, though. We're on to. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Is it appropriate to talk about? Well, I don't know if that's <laughs> public works or not. As Alderman Gutenkopf already pointed out, the capital items of the underpass is that under the public works area or not? I would believe it would be. It's cap is that capital projects or public works? I guess from a procedural standpoint, are we holding off to the end of the discussion to talk about all capital projects, or could we interject with capital project questions during each uh, department? You know, I don't recall how we did it last year. Did we, uh, I thought we did it separately, but. I, I could shed a little light on, on that topic if the council, so there, basically in public works committee can correct me if I'm wrong, but. My, rec my recollection is, is, is wrong, but I believe what we had intended to do, and if you look at that, that line item that Alderman Gutenkopf just highlighted, that 150 in the, the next year out, um, and Tom, Tom, it's the one, right? Yeah. That's the estimate for phase one work in order to do um, 
the phase one work for the underpass uh, prairie path at york street um so when we get to next year's budget the whole topic can be discussed and then the application would go in for a 2015 um award and then construction be 2017 so it's just a number out there that the full discussion of whether this project should go forward or not would happen in the next budget cycle because if you don't put the, the 150 it doesn't go in then we just won't won't uh, proceed follow up to that Alderman Bram. thank you mr. mayor um, I guess what we've done in previous budget cycles is just not dive too deep into some of these discussion items and just call it a circle back item um, I, I don't know if I'm in agreement with including th those monies for uh, this fiscal year budget line item so I would like to call out this line item 8025 as a as a circle back item so we can discuss it more in depth later thank you just a point of clarification that, that 150 is in the 2014 proposed so it's the two year out budget where the that has any any funding at all for that this year's budget does not have any funding for the underpass studies construction nothing city manager it might be appropriate to mention our news from uh, DuPage managers because it will tie in soon yes um, if you recall when we discussed the uh, the capital budget um, what way we had anticipated looking at this was to apply for STP funding through the DuPage mayor managers apply for a balance of that through CMAC and as director Hughes indicated that 150,000 is for phase one work so that we can apply for the CMAC funds um, the DuPage mayor managers um, group that uh, awards the STP funds initially gave us 350 or so thousand dollars uh, on an application of 1.6 million um, and that's what we came to the council with after our discussion um, apparently the uh, the STP was funded uh, had a significant bump in funding uh, they went back and reviewed the projects determined our project to be the first project to fund and gave us the remainder of our application so we now have 1.6 million sitting at the DuPage mayor managers group um, awaiting our decision on what we're going to do so you're they, saying they found 1.4 million dollars they they received an, an extra an additional allocation and determined that our project was um, ranked high enough to to fund that in quite a twist um, so that will sit at the DuPage mayor managers um, uh, STP funding uh, for a few years until they understand where we're at they understand that we're not going to apply for CMAC funds in this round that the next round is two years out and that they would hold that for us until we make the determination of which direction we're going to go and that that's relative that's new news that just came up unexpectedly unexpectedly last week uh, which was very much a surprise much like my appointment to the to the DuPage Cook Quarter Commission very surprising but uh, it doesn't mean we have to do anything with it it just means it's there and as we talk about these capital projects no decision has been made to do it or not but it's a factor to consider in terms of our discussions because we now know we have a significant amount of funding available Alderman Mulder then Alderman Bram uh, just a couple of things um, one I want to go back to the concept of looking at the capital budget um, my concern with trying to do that at this point is that we have an agenda that's already set that says here's what we're going to look at today and the capital I agree we need to look at and we need to get in depth in it I, and I absolutely agree with that but at the same time it's really not one of the list here so I don't know if everybody's prepared to be discussing the capital uh, secondly I, I do have some grave concerns about just jumping forward with that underpass project so I, I think we need to no I, I wasn't saying we we're jumping forward. I was I just saying I there's just some information that we might as well yeah. share so I think there's a great deal of discussion that needs to occur before we move forward with that project Alderman Bram thank you and to Alderman Mullender's comments I, I agree that's why I asked already what the procedural <coughs> steps would be uh, because we've done it in uh, both ways in the past but it actually is one of our line items um, line item I, I capital project funds uh, at the bottom there so that might touch on some of it um, but my only question before we move forward and, and pass this um, underpass discussion is the funds the allocation the grant funds that um, I'm glad they're able to find 1.4 million in in addition to what they've already provided to us I wish I can find that in my own checkbook um, <laughs> but with that said are these funds 
indefinitely going to be held for Elmhurst if we, we move forward with this project? Or I would assume they would have to have some type of time frame. STP does not have a uh, sunset on it, so we're good till till the next round of CMAC applications. So the tentative date for construction, if this were to go forward, would be 2017, and the STP funds are good till then. We've double checked with uh, DuPage mayors and managers. And just to clarify, the reason the 150s is there is no funding source pays for phase one. That's the design report, the project design report. That's the initial part of the whole engineering you have a lot better chances of getting CMAC funding if that phase one work is done. So that's why that 150 would be completely city dollars. And again, that discussion would, would occur in the next budget cycle. There is no money in this year's budget for anything to do with the York underpass. So nothing's been spent to date. Right. Thank you. Okay, um, other questions? I think that uh, takes us through anything on public works. Um, I think we're going to, I would propose to the council that maybe we knock off the next two funds uh, this evening at least, so they're kind of short ones. Does that seem agreeable? Agreed. Okay. Well, and then stop at TIFF, stop before TIFF. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Okay. All right, uh, thank you, Director Hughes, uh, or maybe you're here for Motor Fuel Tax Fund, who's uh, presenting on that. All right, continue. Um, if there's any significant changes this year, anyone had any? Questions? Questions? I don't know. Anything? I haven't gotten there. Our parking system fund? Parking fund, uh, about the only highlight really is just to, to remind uh, page 240, 247, you'll see in the uh, parking deck maintenance, the 5014 account. What you see there is every um, we do all three all three parking decks get a uh, a, re a retrofit um, about every four years, and so you'll see that uh, um, there's forty thousand dollars in there for engineering, and then after that. Every year we do the construction, so we budget 40 in the first year to do work. The next year on a deck, then the next year we budget 40 plus 110, 40 plus 110. So every four years, the parking decks get a, a um, repairs and maintenance. And you know, again, I, I always joke with the Public Works and Buildings Committee, but it got us that nice write-up in Concrete Coatings magazine. I'm sure you all saw it, but. Uh, <laughs> They basically were talking, it was a couple of years ago, but they were talking about the Schiller deck and, and basically talked about how it still looks almost brand new and, and really in the decks, the maintenance is highly critical because they're concrete and steel, they got salt in them, they just want to fall apart if you don't maintain them. So I think it's been money really well spent. Okay, any questions on parking? Alderman Peza? Yes, uh, two, well, obviously page 247. 8019, I'm not ringing a bell here. The 11 million under 1213 <clears throat> was, and then it's down to zero. Was that for the Addison deck? Yes, it is, uh, actually. Did we already bond that? I thought we did not. No. no. So why no. is it zero? Director Gaston and I were just talking that that'll be a carryover to next year's budget. Uh, uh, but we usually hit those on our last budget okay. meeting. Um, so that'll, okay. that'll shift a year. Question? Okay, I think I would propose then that we adjourn. We will pick up with TIF funds and capital project funds. We're not adjourning yet, I'm just saying where we're, we're going to go. Thank you. City Manager? Um, I just want to point out, and this is um, unbudget related, non-budget related, in your packets this evening was a, a draft copy that we sent to the school district for the latest IGA. That, maybe that didn't come out clear. The latest version of the IGA was sent to the school district tonight for their discussion tomorrow. Uh, I confirmed with Superintendent Perneau that he did receive it and that it will be discussed. Uh, I want the council to understand that they do have it in their packet. If you have questions, feel free to call me or call Mike Cop tomorrow. 
Alderman Healy? Uh, do we know if that's an executive session or open session? That is listed as open session. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, any other announcements? Make a motion to adjourn, please. Alderman Morley, Alderman York. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourn. Thank you. <laughs>